Hey guys, what is up and welcome to my channel. It's a hardback life. My name is Jordan and today we're going to be talking about my December wrap up. Now you guys know that in December, uh, if you follow my videos, that December there was a readathon going on called the Reindeer Readathon. And uh, long story short, my team that I was on, Team Stalking, won! Woohoo! Now, uh, I wish I contributed more. I only read two books for the readathon. And I, the other two I read were books that I carried over from November. But I still got two books in, and that helped my team, especially with the extra bonus of the prompts that I did. Uh, for the bonus prompts. Um, but yeah, my team won because the majority of my teammates were kicking booty on their uh, reading. And yeah, I felt bad because obviously I couldn't contribute as much because I was yeah feeling really busy. And also I got sick with COVID. And... I'm not sick anymore with COVID, but I still have this stupid cough and my th throat still hurts a little bit because of COVID. And yeah, so that was what was going on in December, but I still managed to read four books and that was awesome. Now, without further ado though, I'm going to show you those four books and if they were part of the readathon, I will let you know. Before we move on, actually, I just want to say Happy New Year. This is my first video of the year. I wanted to make one like the first couple days, within the first couple days, but I was still, um, I don't know, I just was still feeling a little weird and stuff like that. I, and plus with it being the new year, I don't know, I was doing a lot of, <sighs> sorry, I was doing a lot of family stuff. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, the first book I read in December, or, well, finished, was a carryover from November. And it's my favorite book that I read for the year. And that is Ready Player One, ladies and gentlemen. Ready Player One. This is the first book in the Ready Player One series. I say series because there's now two books, and I think the author, Ernest Klein is going to make a third. Now, this book is about a boy named Wade who takes you on a journey of how he found the egg and then won the ultimate prize. And the outline of the story, basically, uh, the creator of this game, James Halliday, leaves a video for um, the members of the Oasis. That's the game. And he tells them, basically, um, they have to find this egg. And when they find this egg in the game, uh, they will not only win the glory of finding the egg and winning the game, They'll win his fortune, which is $240 billion. And, man, this book is so entertaining. I read it, actually, I started reading it in October. I don't know why. I just couldn't get into it that at that time. And so I restarted it in November. And I started reading it with the audiobook which coincidentally is read by Will Wheaton. And so I read along with it when I could physically, but I mostly like was reading it or like hearing it in the car while I was on my way to work a lot. And man, this book is so good. I enjoyed it so much. I'm not a big gamer, but I love reading books about uh, virtual worlds and stuff like that. Um, that's the sci-fi I kind of go for most of the time. Um, yeah, so I really, really enjoyed this book. 
I definitely recommend it. If you're not a big gamer, that doesn't matter, I think, for this book. And if you're also not a big sci-fi fan, this is still a fun book to read. I definitely recommend it. And I definitely recommend the audiobook. Will Wheaton does a fantastic job. And I have Ready Player Two on my nightstand, but I don't know if I want to read it. I probably still will read it. We'll see. But this was the first book I read in December, and my favorite that I read the whole year. And I'm going to be doing a favorite book of the year book tag, which I created, by the way. And I might tag some other people to do it. Who knows? But yeah, uh, this was my favorite book that I read in 2022. Second book I read was none other than Holly Black's Book of Night. This is Holly Black's first venture into adult fantasy. And this is basically about shadow magic, which I've never read a book about shadow magic before. So this was like a first time thing. And um, basically our main character, Charlie, who is a thief, she happens upon uh, a dead body and she goes dig after she sees that dead body she goes digging into uh, more information about what happened and all that and then because she goes digging there are people that assume she's involved and they come for her asking for her, her what she knows and they obviously tell her she they're not going to stop and, or that, and that she needs to stay out of it and stuff like that. And she ends up getting more involved. And it just goes from there. Um, her boyfriend also, her boyfriend Vince is also a huge part of this. So you'll have his perspective in this book as well. And I, I just really, I really enjoyed this book. I was shocked. I said the last couple of years, if you've been watching my videos, that I would never read a Holly Black book because her books just never interested me. But I changed my mind, obviously, because I bought this and I read it and I loved it. And I can't wait for book two because this is going to be a series, which I didn't know. And I'm very excited for that. And I also have... This isn't the first book, but this is Queen of Nothing, the third book, and the Folk of the Air trilogy. So, I'm definitely looking forward to reading more from Holly Black. And yeah, I'm definitely excited to see what her books, her other books, have in store. And she also uh, wrote another book within uh, the world of the Folk of the Air, so which is a spinoff. And I'm looking forward to reading that as well. Okay. The third book I finished in 2022 of December is... History is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. This is about a boy named Griffin who lost his boyfriend. Because um, his boyfriend passed away. And in this book, you go from the past in the present of obviously him, him um, Griffin and his boyfriend Theo when they were together in the past and the present when Griffin is trying to navigate life without Theo. And this book deals with mental health and just obviously loss and what you do with that loss, you know, grief and all that stuff. It's a pretty powerful book. Um, this is my first full-length novel just by Adam Silvera. I have read a book by Adam Silvera, but it was also written by Becky Albertalli as well, and that was What If It's Us, which I love that book. Um, and I'm going to read Here, Here's to Us, which is a sequel. Oh, probably actually next month for Valentine's Day. Um, or actually since the February is the month of Valentine's Day. I'll probably read it then. This book was pretty powerful. I thought I was going to cry, 
but I did not, it, which is okay. I still felt the emotions, um, obviously moments of frustration because our main character's decision making wasn't the best. And that's obviously because he lost someone he loved, which is, I mean, that happens a lot where, you know, in real life, we lose people we love to death. And we tend to lash out in different ways, some ways destructive, and our main character does lash out in some destructive ways. That's all I'm going to say. Do I recommend this book? I do. I definitely would say, though, like, I wish I was a little bit younger when I read this, because, I mean, I, mean, I relate to it in a lot of ways, like LGBTQ+. Plus representation that's one way I relate to it and then grief and loss I wish I read this when I was like uh teen to early 20s because I'm now 32 almost 33 but I still enjoyed this anyway this was um history is all you left me by Adam Silvera and the third book I read in December Oh, by the way, I didn't mention it before, but uh, I finished um, Book of Night is the book I read, one of the books I read for the readathon, um, for the reindeer readathon, and I read that for the Vixen prompt, which was read a book that, what was it? It was read a book that is overhyped yeah and I enjoyed that book okay and the last book I read for the month of December was Clockwork Princess by my favorite author Cassandra Clare at least my favorite young adult author and this is the third and final installment in the Infernal Devices this is about a girl named Tessa Gray who gets a letter from her brother and she's living in New York at the time. And um, her brother's in London. And he's gotten himself into a sticky situation. So he writes a letter calling for Tessa to come help him. And she does come help him. But it turns out to be a trap. And she's stuck in this house with these two warlock sisters. And she's stuck there into the species, the Shadow Hunters happen upon her and the situation and they save her and this whole this whole series is so good it's my favorite series of all time the infernal devices and um yeah it's basically just about one individual who is trying to destroy the shadow hunters for um, some wrongdoing that he feels they have done to him. And that's all I'm going to say. And our main character, Tessa, is the key. Well, okay, that's a little bit of a spoiler. Um, but not too much of a spoiler. I will just say, this is fantastic. I am rereading the whole series so that I can uh, continue uh, for... Um, reading The Last Hours trilogy, which is a spinoff of this series, because this, The Last Hours focuses on the children of our main characters in the series. And I really, this is the third time I have read this series. Oh, and this is, what this was for the um, Dasher prompt, where it was re finish a series. And I finished this series again for the third time, because it was a reread. And I'm going to actually talk about this book in my favorite book of the year book tag, because it was part of the questions, um, at least one of the books I chose for part of the questions. And you will you guys will see more of that in a little bit, um, probably within the next day or two. <clears throat> <coughs> Alright, you guys, that is all the books I read for the readathon. 
Now, before I go, I want to say a quick shout out to Eric from Break Even Books. He is the one who hosted the readathon, and that was their fourth year hosting. That was his fourth year hosting the readathon. It is so much fun. You definitely, um, if you missed out on participating this year, definitely participate next year. Uh, well, 2023 of December, because it is so much fun. Getting to know your teammates is a lot of fun, and reading all these books for the prompts is just as fun, of course, because it's reading. That's something we all love to do. And uh, also shout out to my team captain, Kristen, um, from Kristen Craves Books. She's a fantastic person. And you should definitely go check out her channel. I'll link her channel in the description. Kristen Craves Books. And uh, have a great day. And have a great year. I know it's a whole new year. Full of uh, possibilities. And new goals. New New Year's resolutions that everybody wants to um, try and do. <laughs> And yeah, just have a great, great time. And I will have a whole bunch of videos for this month because one, it's a whole new year. Two, January is my birthday month. And three, yeah, I just have a lot of stuff planned. Anyway, guys, have a great day. Bye.